In the tense and crucial period of May 22, 1966, the political climate in Uganda took a dramatic turn. The Prime Minister, Apollo Milton Obote, in a meeting held at the Kampala State Lodge, summoned the following high-ranking officials. The Minister of Defense, Shaban Opolot, the Minister of Internal Affairs, Basil Baterengaya, and the Armed Forces Commander, General Idi Amin Dada. Now, agency went on to hang in the air as Obote emphasized the pressing need to address a critical matter at hand. The decision that emerged out of this urgent meeting shaped the course of events dramatically. An operation was sanctioned to target the heart of the Buganda Kingdom, specifically focusing on their seat of their governance at the Bolange Mango. Now, the consequences were profound as the kingdom was left in range, symbolized by the destruction of the historical Bolange building, and the king at the time sought refuge in the neighboring Burundi and eventually found sanctuary in Britain. The exiled king would later on be known as Sir Edward Mutesa II. In this episode of Uganda in History, we uncover the life, rise, and legacy of Sir Edward Mutesa II, the Buganda king who fought and championed for Uganda's independence from the Britain. Sir Edward Mutesa II was born on the 19th of November 1929 at the house of Albert Cook, a colonial officer which was located in Makindia. He was the son of Kabaka Daudi Chua II, a king who reigned over the Buganda between 1897 and 1939. Now, as fate would have it, Mutesa's journey to the throne wasn't any typical fairy tale. When his father passed away, he was just 15 years old. But here's where the twist comes in. He didn't take the reins immediately. Instead, he had the help of regents steering the kingdom's will until he became of age to rule alone. Now, what's truly intriguing is how the young prince didn't just learn about his own culture and traditions. He took a detour and ended up in England at the Magdalene College in Cambridge. But here's the kicker. Mutesa joined the University Officers Training Corporations and got commissioned as a captain in the Grenadier Guards. But before that, he had studied at King's College Budo in colonial Uganda, a school meant for royal kids of chiefs and kings. But that's not all. Being a prince, he wasn't just taught academics. The British made sure he had their upper-class English accent. They schooled him in English tradition and the sophisticated ways as an English gentleman. Well, it was a fight and uh, we had to fight our way out. But uh, uh, you please uh, forgive me if I don't uh, make too long a uh, statement tonight because of the overwhelming sort of circumstances of my welcome and pleasure of being here and um now during his exile in london from 1953 to 1955 there was a secret link between motesa and ignatius kangave mosas and when he returned he secretly supported the uganda national congress during the crucial period for the fight for independence and across the border in kenya a whole different story was brewing aside when motesa actually lent support to the mau mau revolution back in kenya's fight for independence and you can imagine how did all that happen. Now let's all rewind back a bit. It all traces back to 1945 when Semakula Mulomba attended the Manchester Conference in the UK where African freedom fighters were determined to liberate Africa. Now fast forward to 1946 when John Mukinyata and Semakula Mulomba returned from Britain on the same ship. Kenyatta, the man who spearheaded the Kenya's fight for independence, set the stage by launching the Mau Mau War upon his return in Kenya in 1948. The birth of the town Mau Mau which was representing the fervent cry for Africans' independence, echoed its powerful message across the land. But here's where the kicker comes in. Kenyatta, lacking the funds for the revolution, turned to Semakula Molumba, who then approached none other than Kabaka of Buganda, Sir Edward Mutesa II. Now, in a COVID meeting, Mutesa agreed to financially support Kenyatta's cause, solidifying their profound friendship between the two leaders. This alliance would become crucial extending as far as providing refuge for Ugandans in Kenya amidst the crisis that unfolded in Uganda in 1966. Now, as Uganda achieved independence in 1962 under the leadership of Apollo Milton Obote, a new era emerged. The country's constitution granted semi-autonomy to the Kingdom of Uganda within the Ugandan Federation. And here is where it becomes interesting. Obote and the Uganda's People's Congress, UPC, reached an agreement with Motesa. Now, in a parliamentary session on October 4, 1963, Mutesa was elected the president with the overwhelming support, marking a turning point in Uganda's politics. But what's truly striking about Mutesa and his unwavering dedication to national unity 
His support for Buganda's Kabaka Yekaz Party alliance with the UPC was a testament to his commitment to unity. Now, not to mention during his presidency, Mutesa selflessly offered his entire salary to develop the neglected regions of Karamoja, even establishing a hospital for its people in Moroto. It's no wonder Mutesa played a monumental role in Uganda's fight for independence. He pushed for freedom from the Britain and was exiled for his unwavering demands. When he returned, he laid down the 1955 Buganda Agreement, charting the path towards Uganda's independence. But twists and turns in Mutesa's life didn't stop there. Now picture this, Mutesa was officially crowned as the Kabaka at Budo on November 19, 1942, during his 18th birthday. At the time, Buganda was part of the Ugandan Protectorate, a territory under the British Empire's influence. Now the period from 1945 to 1950 was far from smooth. Protests were widespread, directed at both the governor of Uganda and Mutesa's government. But the most significant conflict arose in the early 1950s, when the British government toyed with an idea of uniting British East Africa which was Uganda, Kenya, and Tanganyika into a federation. The mere suggestion of this sent shock waves through the African communities, fearing a repeat of history where white settlers controlled the regions much like the federation of Rhodesia and New Zealand. Now, Mutesa was a vocal opponent of this proposal. This disagreement led to a head-on clash with the British governor, Sir Andrew Cohen, sparking what would be known as the Kabaka Crisis of 1955. Now, the tensions escalated and in 1955, the Luchiko of Buganda sought independence from the Ugandan protectorate, with Mutesa himself demanding the separation of Buganda from the rest of Uganda. Now, the fallout was intense. Mutesa was deposed and exiled on November 30th, causing an uproar amongst the Baganda. His forced departure turned him into a murder in their eyes, igniting massive protests against Cohen's actions. Now, after two years of intense resistance and negotiations, Mutesa was reinstated under a settlement that defined him as a constitutional monarch and granted Buganda the right to elect representatives to the Buganda's parliament, which was the Luchiko. However, the tussles continued. In June 1960, Mutesa once again called for an end to British protection for Buganda. Now, despite his stand, national elections were held allowing Benedicto Chuanuka and his Democratic Party DP to secure victory, establishing a new government of internal self-rule. Now, as the process towards the unitary state continued, Mutesa had to navigate challenging negotiations. In 1961, a British commission recommended Uganda become a unitary democratic state with a strong central government, offering Buganda a federal relationship under its Kabaka within the new state. Now, eventually, Mutesa yielded to this pressure accepting the agreement in October. His party, the Kabaka Yekakewai, allied with Obote's Uganda's People's Congress UPC and the coalition won the 1962 elections. Now, Obote became the Prime Minister and Uganda gained independence from Britain on October 1962. The Uganda's People's Congress Party represented modern African politics, directly opposing the traditional practices Mutesa stood for. Now, despite initially teaming up with the Kabaka, Obote eventually steered clear of the Kabaka's influence. By 1964, it became evident clear that the trend was favoring Obote, with members of other parties, including the Democratic Party and the Kabaka Ika, shifting to support the Uganda's People's Congress. Now, meanwhile, Obote appointed Mutesa to the ceremonial position of the president in 1963. Now, the political landscape was shifting, and Mutesa found himself at the center of an evolving and complex political drama. His role, which was once dominant, was gradually eclipsed by the changing tides of the Ugandan politics. Now, the tale of Mutesa's life takes yet another dramatic turn. The final crisis hit hard in 1966, shattering the political landscape of Uganda. Now, here is the crux of it. A member of the opposition accused the government of being involved in illicit gold trafficking from Congo. Now, early that year, a banker linked financial records revealing unsettling ties between Idi Amin, a Uganda army soldier, closely linked to Apollo Milton Obote, the prime minister. Now, large sums of amount of money were seen moving in and out of Amin's account causing a lot of eyebrows. Now, things reached a boiling point when a motion in parliament charged Amin with corruption and alleged Obote in its involvement. The Uganda People's Congress initially dismissed the accusations, but while Obote was away from Kampala on February 4th, Ibingira Ikishiga swayed the cabinet to acknowledge the complaint. Upon Obote's return, attempts to prevent further investigations failed, leading to a political uproar. Obote, in response, suspended the constitution and stripped Mutesa of the presidency. Now, as tensions escalated, a new constitution was introduced, triggering a conflict with the Buganda's Luchiko, since it restricted Buganda's federal powers. Obote, unyielding in his approach, declared a state of emergency and ordered the army to seize the Kabaka's palace in Mengo. 
the events took a tragic turn. The attack on the palace resulted in the death of over a hundred lives. Sir Edward Mutesa II narrowly escaped seeking refuge in the neighboring state of Burundi before finding asylum in Britain, where he eventually settled in London. Now Mutesa's life journey was not only marked by political upheavals but also by a tragic end. He passed away due to alcohol poisoning in his flat in 1969. Now the circumstances surrounding his death have sparked controversies. Now while officially identified as suicide by the Metropolitan Police, some claim it was an assassination, suggesting that Mutesa might have been force-fed vodka by agents linked to Obote's regime. In a curious turn of events just before his passing, Mutesa had been interviewed by a British journalist John Simpson. He described to have left Mutesa in a sober and good spirit. Simpson relayed this information to the police upon learning of Mutesa's death, but this line of inquiry was not pursued further. Now, after his body was embalmed by Desmond Henley, it was returned to Uganda in 1971, following the overthrow of Obote. A state funeral was held at the Kasubi tombs ordered by Idi Amin Dada, the same individual who as the army commander had led the assault on Mutesa's palace in 1966. Now, while in London, Mutesa often referred to as King Freddy is said to have lived in poverty. Now, his personal life reflected a complex picture reportedly involving 12 wives and several children. Notably, Ronald Mwenda Mutebi, who succeeded him, now reigns over the Buganda Kingdom as the king. Now, during the period around Uganda's independence in 1962, Mutesa proposed the transformation of the Buganda's emblem, which had the shield and the spear, into the Uganda's national emblem, minus the lion at the bottom. Now, this emblematic change saw the lion being replaced by the river Nile, the coffee crop, and the cotton crop at the emblem's base, with the Buganda's drum at the center. There was also a proposition countered by Apollo Milton Obote, who suggested the inclusion of the crested crane and the Ugandan cob. Now, Mutesa's vision extended far beyond politics. He was an advocate for education, civilization, and a prosperous life for his people. He constructed key institutions such as the Masaka Technical Institute, now known as the Mutesa I Royal University, and the Majestic Bolange Building in Mengo, presently the seat of the Kabaka's government. Additionally, Mutesa harbored plans to establish agricultural state farms across Buganda, intending to cultivate food and cash crops for exports. Regrettably, these plans were thwarted due to the 1966 crisis. Now, remembered as a man who spoke English with fineness and a fondness for hunting and football, Mutesa's abrupt departure from his kingdom leaves a legacy deeply hitched in the annals of Buganda, Uganda, and the region at large. His aspirations for progress and development continue to resonate even up to today, leaving an indelible mark on the history of Uganda and its future. Now, if you found this video informative and engaging, don't forget to give it a like, share, and subscribe to help the channel grow. This has been Regan for Uganda in History as always, and I look forward to seeing you in another video.